Hey, Coach, welcome to Manhattan. Thank you. Thank you. Very excited to be here. So. Um, when this job popped up, what most excited you and intrigued you about it? Um, honestly, just the just K State in general. I remember as a player, formerly in the Big Twelve, you know, just what K State was, and you know, every time we lined up against K State, you knew what you were going to get, and just an opportunity to be a part of that, to come in and help build it from the ground floor up. You know, it, it excited me more than anything. And also just familiarity with a few of the staff members and Coach Van Malone, Coach Buddy White, Coach Jason Ray. And, you know, we all had, you know, previous experience working together and they couldn't tell me enough good things about Coach Kleiman. And, you know, when I got a chance to talk to him on the phone, I mean, and my wife and I spoke with Coach Kleiman, got a chance to see for myself and it got me more excited. So, you know, very blessed and honored to be here, but the work is just beginning. I know every strength coach has a, a few certain things they emphasize with players. Um, what are your big biggest things that you work on with these guys, both in the weight room and you know just when you're you're building relationships with them when you're not working out? It's just that it's building relationships. You know everything after that, you know, is just extra. You know because the one thing that I have to come in, I have to come in and learn the guys. You know, I have to come in and, and show them respect and demand respect in return. And then from that point on, it's about building trust. You know, you can only push a, a person only as far as they trust you. So putting as many deposits in that trust bank as possible just to where, you know, these guys, they don't they don't care how much we know as coaches until they know how much we care as coaches. So just, you know, coming in, being authentic, being genuine and showing showing them genuine love and care. And then that's when the work can begin because they know that when they're being pushed, it's coming from an honest and genuine place. How about in the weight room? Are there any specific exercises or things that you, you stress that are uniquely yours? I wouldn't say anything is unique. I'm, <laughs> I'm a guy that, you know, I'm, I know enough to be dangerous and I surround myself with experts. But, uh, but you know, when it comes to just program philosophy, I didn't invent anything that we do. I just simply adopt it. And the thing is, is, you know, really this first week, my goal is to come in and evaluate where we are as a program from a physical standpoint, as far as what we do on the field and what we do in the weight room. You know, from there, you know, I sit down with the position coaches, the coordinators, the head coach, and just get an understanding of philosophy, you know, what each side of the ball looks like. And from a special team standpoint, from there, I get with the athletic training staff just to understand limitations, you know, different injury histories and this, everything of that nature in order to put the plan together. So the thing that's, you the, uh, I guess makes a successful strength and conditioning coach, I would have to say is being adaptable, you know, to, to what the hand that you're dealt. So we want to make sure that we come in and not just prescribe a program that worked for another university or work for another place that we've been. Now we want to come in and, and uh, figure out what the needs are here at K-State. And then from there, you know, work backwards, work with, begin with the end in mind and, and then develop the plan in order to, to get these guys to where they can be the most successful on the field. So what that looks like is different for each position group. And we're still learning what those uh, expectations are. All right. Thank you, Jermaine, and welcome again. Thank you very much. Fitz? Hey, Coach, welcome to K-State. Um, how quickly did this come together from – uh, hearing about the opening to actually packing a bag and moving to Manhattan, Kansas. <laughs> it was it was really quick, really quick, you know. But uh, man, honestly, I'm 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 a big believer in my faith, and you know, with that, you know, I know that you know, God has me here for a reason, and you know, I can't explain that. You know, I never hesitated just because I knew that this was sent from up above, and you know, me just sitting here today, and I'm just so appreciative and so thankful. You know, it went from you know having a conversation one night. You know, with just speculating interest to, you know, Coach Kleiman reaching out to the head coach I was working for with at the time. Then Coach Kleiman and I spoke, then our family spoke, and you know, I, I did the the interview and okay, all right, let's let's get the background check and all of the human resource information, you know, and uh get this done. And you know, I I, I loaded the car up on I loaded my truck up with my car behind it on Friday <laughs> and I pulled into Manhattan, Kansas on Saturday evening. So it was a quick turnaround from, from Wednesday learning about it to Saturday getting here. Yeah, that's a fun drive. Um, 
Uh, is it good to be back in the Big 12, back to kind of your roots? No doubt, no question. I mean, I, I enjoyed the, the the winters in, in Florida, don't get me wrong. <laughs> the 80-degree winter then where you can go to the beach on the weekend, it, it, it was nice. But being back close to you know, where, where it all started, for me and and more importantly, you know, now that my wife and I have a son, him getting an opportunity to 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 know where, where dad played ball and in this league and you know just the importance of the Big Twelve and the Midwest in general, you know, it's this is this is a place where, you know, I want my son to grow up. I want him to, to be able to run out of that tunnel if that's what he chooses to do or or if it's on the baseball diamond. But he's he's gonna he's gonna have a closet full of purple here within the next few weeks. You've been on that uh, coaching kind of carousel where you you go there, you get up there, you you know, you, then you know, suddenly you're in Florida. I I assume that you're very hopeful this is a place that you're going to be a while. I'm not hopeful. I'm, I'm I'm pretty sure of it, you know, because I know that this, like I said, this is this is where we're called to be, you know, and I know that you know Kansas State, y'all, everyone, Kansas State family and Wildcat Nation don't know me very much, you know, they know my career path and my and just you know kind of my journey. But the thing is, is that, you know, everywhere I've been, I've give 100% effort of everything that I have every single day. You know, we do that here with Coach Climbing under his direction, you know, we're gonna be here as, for as long as it takes, you know? And so I know that, you know, with the history of Coach Schneider and, you know, everything that he brought to his university, you know, he's, you know, he's, he's done a, a tremendous job. So not comparing ourselves to, to that regime, but, you know, wanting to create this, this new culture, this new environment, just to where this standard is going to be one that, that Wildcat family is going to be very proud of. Thank you, coach. Thank you. Derek. Hey coach, welcome to Manhattan. Uh, would you say you see your most important duty as maybe setting the culture for the program or maximizing performance or how do you balance the two up? Well, the thing is, is uh, you have to look at it. Uh, obviously, if you don't have a culture uh, in place, then, you know, uh, performance will, will suffer. can take you places to where you can't tell like I can't think of it exactly but the bottom line is if we don't get it right from a cultural standpoint then anything we build on top of it won't matter at all so you know we have to make sure that our importance and our focus is on making sure these young men know how to do things right off the field you know because how you do one thing is how you do everything you know coach Kleiman says that and you know I firmly believe that so you know we get these young men to figure out that you know the small details of every little thing in their life matters whether it's going to class whether it's going to a tutor on time showing up to to a rehab appointment or showing up to weights on time then it, it directly impacts impacts what happens on the practice field and reflects on what happens on the game field. So that has to be our priority coming in. Thanks coach. And what would you say was your first interaction like when you addressed the team for the first time, what was that message and what was, what, what was that feeling? Well, it started off with, with Ben Newman, you know, uh, talking to the team and, you know, I think I have two pages worth of notes just from that talk alone. So I was pretty fired up before before I got up there. But uh, but no, just talking to the team, I just I didn't want to get up there and 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 sell myself or make it about me because at the end of the day, it's not about me. I'm here in a duty of service. I'm here to serve these young men and help them navigate life and you know learn tools that are going to help them for the rest of their life. And the beauty of it is we do it, our common vision and purpose is through the game of football. So, you know, football is a great teacher of life. It's taught my, me and myself and my, all of my teammates that I played with throughout the years so many valuable lessons that, that you know, there are too many to count. So it's, it's on me to share that wisdom with these young men. So that was, you know, my main focus on, in, in addressing the team is that, yeah, I'm here to help you guys get right and win championships, you know, but that starts with, with building relationships, so. Thanks, Coach. Michael. Yeah, Jermaine, uh, thanks for bringing some Florida weather with you up here to Kansas. 
Uh, does your approach to any of any lifting change with the uh, with the style of football that Kansas State plays versus Central Florida? Well, the thing is about the game of football, and it was South Florida actually. But the thing with the game of football is that you know being here in the Big Twelve, it's a line of scrimmage league. You know, so the thing is you got to win up front in order to win at all. So when we talk about, you know, as far as the spread offense or or slow ground and pound or run and shoot, whatever you have, I'm not a football coach, so I'm not going to pretend to be the expert here. But I do know that from playing in the Big 12 that you have to win up front to even have a shot. So, you know, a lot of our focus is going to be making sure those guys up front are strong and physical and they're able to move people backwards. OK, and as far as the big skill position, the, the tight ends and, and the and the fullbacks, you know, that's unique, you know, uh, a unique position that I hadn't coached in the past few years. But I am familiar with it because that was a style of offense that that um, I was in before. And so but tight ends, fullbacks, linebackers, those big skill positions, they got to be able to pack a punch in the box, but still be able to move well out in space, you know, because with the teams that spread it around, they're going to try to find mixed match mismatches and they're going to try to get those slower moving guys to, to cover uh, the, the fast guys on offense. So those guys got to be able to move well out in space as well as be able to hit when it comes to time to deliver a, a blow in the box. And then the skill positions, skill is skill no matter where you go. Those guys got to be able to move. They got to run. They got to be able to cut. They got to be able to have, you know, what we call that repeat sprint ability. So if a guy runs a 4-3, you know, on, on a laser in the first quarter of a game, then he has to be able to run that 4-3 in the fourth quarter in order for us to have a chance. And so those are primary focuses that we address within the training of what we do. You know, but, you know, football across the board is is going to have a lot of similarities. And and for, for us, it starts up front. And is it appealing to get into a program that's still trying to adapt some of Coach Clinton's uh, philosophies in, in uh, what will be year three? Well, I don't really think that's for me to answer. You know, obviously, I'm the strength and conditioning coach. So my focus is going to be on preparing the guys for, for whatever style of system, you know, Coach Climbing and the, and the rest of the coaches, you know, decide to, to, to go with. So thank you, Jermaine. We got uh, three hands uh, raised. We'll finish off of those three, starting with John. Yeah, Jermaine, I, I know you mentioned briefly, you know, you remember a little bit about K-State from your playing days. Um, I was curious if you have specific memories that come to mind of, of when you guys played K-State or just what, what kind of you knew about the school from your playing days. I did. I, I definitely remember a guy that wore number 43 by the name of Darren Sproles. <laughs> I remember uh, L. Roberson. I remember Taco Wallace. I remember, I remember uh, <laughs> quite a few of those guys, you know, you know, just because they, they came with a, with a physicality. And so there weren't a lot of household names on Kansas State's football roster. But the thing is, they were all blue collar guys. And no matter who was in that game, you were going to get 110% of whatever they had in the tank. They didn't take plays off. They didn't, you know, shy away from contact. They didn't turn down hits. And so that's really the, the, the biggest memories that I have of, of K State. And I remember one year we came here to play in Manhattan and uh, we had a, a, a pretty good punter. I remember uh, Cole was, a, well, he was leading the country, I want to say in punts. And, you know, that was back before the stadium renovation took place. And, you know, so he was averaging, you know, 45 plus on punting. So we punted one time here uh, in Manhattan and the punt went up. And as soon as it got over the top of the stadium, it actually curled and came backwards and netted as a negative five yard punt. So <laughs> I do that, remember that pretty vividly. But uh, does that answer your question? Yeah, absolutely. I enjoyed that. Thank you, Jermaine. Yeah. Kellis. That's awesome. I need to go back and find that game footage. <laughs> that fun. Hey, uh, if I can embarrass you for a second, how much? How you look in pretty good shape? How much can you squat? How much can you bench? Oh, that's the thing. I don't. I don't load it up like that anymore. I can bench. I can still bench around three eighty five. You know, as far as squat, you know, I, I do more of a speed squat. So I never load more than three fifteen on a bar for the squat, just because at this point I'm just trying to maintain the remains and. Uh, <laughs> But if I had to guess it as a one rep max, it'd be somewhere in the mid 400s. 
All right. Well, those are impressive numbers to me. So, hey, thank you. Appreciate it. I'm sure Kels could hit those numbers as well. Uh, let's finish off here with Ryan. Hey, uh, Tremaine. And working together at Oklahoma State. Uh, I'm sorry, I heard the last part. Oh, of the question. Uh, could you repeat the question, please? Yeah, Truman, I was asking how, how key was the background of Houston natives and then the fact you worked together at Oklahoma State? Well, it was huge, man, just because, I mean, there's only a few people in the world that, you know, that could have called my phone and, you know, and, and I would have, I was in a really good situation where I just came from. Don't get me wrong. And, you know, Van Malone is one of those people that, you know, is, is deeper than coaching. You know, obviously us being from Houston, us having ties all the way back to, St to Stillwater early in my career, you know, they played a big factor. But I think the biggest factor is, you know, who he was and who Coach Wyatt and Coach Ray are, they are as men. You know, and so I'm all about surrounding myself with great people. And so when I was presented the opportunity to to come rejoin forces with those guys, I knew that it was going to be about a lot more than football. You know, being a, a proud husband and a proud dad now, you know, those lessons that I don't I don't have everything figured out. And I'm comfortable saying that. So I want to make sure that I'm surrounded by, you know, men that that believe the same things that I believe, that have the same things that I'm trying to achieve. You know, they've they've had long careers, but they've also been able to to sustain strong families, you know, and still be great dads to their children. And that's the kind of people that I want to be around because that's the kind of person that I am. And then I also want to ask you real quick, uh, in in your coaching career, who is maybe the biggest freak that you've had in the weight room? Oh, wow. Biggest freak I had in the weight room. He's actually still in college. Um, oh. Yeah, a guy by the name of Jonathan Marshall. He's at Arkansas uh, <laughs> right now. But, I mean, he was a, a defensive tackle that weighed, you know, when I had him, he was 308 pounds, had like a 32-inch vertical. He could squat over 700 pounds, bench close to 500. And, I mean, it was just it was just unreal, you know, the, 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 the amount of – talent this this young man was blessed with so well part of the reason I asked that was because I knew you were at South Carolina and I wanted to know where Jadavian Clowney ranked in that oh I didn't I wasn't at South Carolina I was at South Carolina State University they, so. oh man sorry yes, about that I was going to the wrong thing. I apologize yeah. <laughs> wait Tremaine yeah. thank you so much okay no problem thank you